Farmer Will Allen and the Growing Table Written by Jacqueline Briggs-Martin and illustrated by Eric Shabazz Larkin What kind of story is this? What's the genre? I know you know this one. To all those who've ever planted a seed and watched it grow, Farmers who tend food and flowers and tend the earth. J.B.M. That's the author. To my God that gave me this body, to my parents that fed it well, and to my wife that made it happy. Farmer Will Allen. Farmer Will Allen is as tall as his truck. He can hold a cabbage or a basketball in one hand. When he laughs, everyone laughs. Glad to be in his crew. When he talks, everyone listens. But some say the special thing about Will Allen is that he can see what others can't see. Are they right? When he looked at an abandoned city lot and saw a huge table heaped with food, was he right? I see a lot of comparisons. Can you think of different things that have been compared, especially in that first paragraph? The kitchen table. When Will Allen was a boy, bowls of peas, greens, and his favorite lima beans with ham covered the kitchen table. My mother often fixed enough food for 30, Will says. We never had a car or a TV, but we always had good food. He remembers people who'd come to dinner tired and drooped and leave laughing. I want you to notice how the font is different in some of these words and also the dialogue. I would have liked to have sat at his table. You know Mrs. Miller loves vegetables. Will's family grew most of their food. Will loved the food, but he hated the work. He planned to quit on planting, picking, pulling weeds, leave those Maryland fields for basketball or white shirt work, and he did. He graduated from college and moved to Belgium to play professional basketball. Check out the words planting, picking, pulling weeds, and basketball. When a Belgian friend asked him to help dig potatoes, Will realized he loved digging in the dirt. He grew so much food that he and his wife Cindy covered their kitchen table with Thanksgiving dinner for a team of basketball friends. Remember how I told you how work is good for you? You can learn to like it. Makes us feel good about who we are. A new kind of farm. When Will was done with basketball, he worked a white shirt, shirt job in Wisconsin and found time to grow vegetables on Cindy's parents' land, but Bill wanted his own place. He'd seen that fresh vegetables were as scarce in the city as trout in the desert. Will believed everyone everywhere had a right to good food. Did you hear another comparison? I wonder what the author's message is on that page. But how could Will farm in the middle of pavement and parking lots? Check out this question mark. One day driving in Milwaukee, Will spotted six empty greenhouses on a plot of land about the size of a large supermarket for sale, all in caps. He could see kids who'd never eaten a ripe tomato, never crunched a raw green bean, sitting at his table eating vegetables. Will Allen 
bought that city lot. I really like this guy. The Dirty Soil. Will had a start on his table. He had the land, but the table was empty. The problem was Will's soil, dirty with chemicals and pollution. He had no money for machines to dig out the bad soil for truckloads of good soil. What to do? In Bill Belgium, Will had learned to make good soil with food garbage. They called it composting. But he needed lots of garbage. He asked his friends to save food waste, apple peels, and old zucchinis. What is the text structure of that page? Will collected those scraps in big white buckets and dumped them into piles. He added hay, leaves, newspapers, red, Wiggler Worms Water. Okay, let me start that over. Have you ever noticed sometimes when you read something wrong, you have to start over and read it again? Will collected those scraps in big white buckets and dumped them into piles. He added hay, leaves, newspapers, red wiggler worms, water. Every now and then, he turned the piles. Nope, I still read it wrong. Okay, I'm going to look at this page. Do you see right there how worms has a comma there? That means something has to come after it to end the sentence. I'm going to try it again. Will collected those scraps in big white buckets and dumped them into piles. He added hay, leaves, newspapers, worms, red wiggler worms, and water. Every now and then, he turned the piles to get air into the mix. Neighborhood kids stopped by to ask what he was doing. Will told them about the piles and the red wiggler worms that would keep the garbage and help it become compost. The kids came back day after day to help. What is the cause of having worms in the soil? Do you remember how we talked about that? Red wiggler worms. Then one day, bad news. The red wiggler crew was dying. Is that a cause or an effect? Will and the kids studied worms for five years. They learned not to feed the worms too much. And they discovered the best menu for red wigglers. No hot peppers, onions, garlic, lots of watermelon rinds, sweet potato scraps, molasses. And then the squirmy crew had stayed hard at work. Will says worm magic is what makes his farm grow. I guess they discovered the cause for that problem. Making a bigger table. Growing power. Once Will had good soil, he was ready to plant vegetables, but he didn't have much space. How could he grow, en grow enough food on a small city plot? Will Allen looked around. He saw that he had all the space from the soil under his feet to the top of the greenhouses. He hung plant baskets from the ceiling. He grew greens in buckets, greens in rows. He crowded shelves with pots of spinach, chard, lettuce. He grew stacks of tiny lead salad sprouts in boxes, hundreds of boxes. I know you know the text structure for that page. One thing we can say about Will, he never gives up. I want you to look at the little design on his shirt. I wonder what that means. 
Will added hoop houses to hold more boxes and more long rows of vegetables. He added vats of water and fish to his greenhouses. Fish wastewater grows the sprouts. The sprouts clean the water for the fish. Fish, water, sprouts work together like a three-part farm machine. He added goats, chickens, turkeys, and bees to that city farm he named Growing Power. Oh, now I see what the emblem is. I see something scientific going on here, like a cycle. I love that illustration. Finding Farmers. Farmer Will's work clothes are jeans and a blue sweatshirt with cut off sleeves. He's busy from early morning till night. Still, one person could never grow all the food Will wanted to grow. Where could he find more farmers in the middle of a city? Will Allen looked around. He saw teenagers, school children, parents, grandparents. He taught them to be farmers. Then Will's table held as much as several supermarkets, thousands of pounds of food. Neighbors who live in high rises far off the ground, the growing ground, came and still come to Will's farm to buy fresh vegetables, fish, or eggs. People have gone and still go to fancy restaurants to eat Will's food. But Will wanted his table to feed folks all over the world. How could he build one huge table that crossed continents? Uh, let's think just for a minute about Will's character traits. One thing I can see, he never gives up, but there are other traits that I'm beginning to see about this man that I think you can see too. Growing power around the world. World. The whole world. Wow. Will thought about the problem of the world-sized table. He looked around and saw his many helpers who'd learned to be farmers. He would teach people everywhere to grow food for their own tables. Will Allen began to travel. He had crisscrossed the United States, showing others how to farm in the city, and he has taken his red wigglers to Kenya, to London. Why do I have trouble saying red wigglers? I know you know the name of that phrase. All over the world, the world has come to Milwaukee, to his farm. 20,000 visitors a year. They tour the greenhouses. They watch goats. That would be my favorite part. They snack on greens and go home, planning to start a farm on a city lot, a rooftop, or an abandoned highway. I love this message, this message from the author. It's the main message of this book, I think. Will and the 50 million. Is Will Allen done? Never! We need 50 million more people growing food on porches and pots inside yards, he says. Will is always looking for new ways to make the table bigger more schoolyard plots, a vertical farm that's five stories high, farms in empty factories or warehouses. Will Allen dreams of a day when city farms are as common as streetlights and every table is covered with good food. Check out that text. Why is never in such huge letters? I did it when I read it. Starts with an E. Your table. Will Allen can see what others can't see. When he sees kids, he sees farmers. Will you be on Will Allen's crew? Will you grow vegetables for your family, your neighbors, on your porch or roof or yard? How big will your table be? Wow. Those are beets.
Mrs. Miller loves beets. Of course, Mrs. Miller loves all vegetables, right? Dear reader, eater, maybe future farmer. This is an afterword. Afterword. It's postscript, which means it's written after. I'm glad we're able to meet through this book. As you know, I didn't want to farm when I was young, but now I love growing food that tastes good. I like to farm in all sorts of places. Sometimes I have gardens in the ground, like a garden in your backyard. Sometimes I like to put gardens on roofs or hang my plants from hangers on small pipes. My next big project is to build a tall building. It will not be full of offices or apartments, but it will be filled with lots of plants, fresh salad greens, tomatoes, and other vegetables. I'm very pleased you are learning about farming, about growing and eating good, healthy food. What do you think Will wants you to eat? Huh. I hope you know that you are the key to helping people at home and around the world to have a better, safer, and healthier food. Healthier food to eat. How? By number one, eating lots of fresh veggies and fruits. Number two, by planting your own small garden anywhere, in your backyard, front lawn, your porch, your deck, and pots in your kitchen, in your living room. You could even put a garden in your bedroom and grow good food for yourself and your family. Number three, by starting a worm factory. That's right, I said worms, because worms are great. The secret to being a great farmer is great soil to farm in. Start a compost bin with your parents and get those worms working. Finally, I invite you to visit my Growing Power Farm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and bring your parents and friends along too. We would love to show you all the things we have growing in our greenhouses, including our livestock and the red wiggler worms. I can't wait to see what you grow. Will Allen, farmer, founder, and CEO of Growing Power Incorporated.